So you've played wrecking for a little bit and you're ready to try some circuits. But you pull out your maker pen and you start spawning in chips and crossing wires and it's very overwhelming and confusing and you don't really know where to start. Well have no fear, today I'm going to show you how to get started learning circuits. So first we'll go through like the absolute basics and then we'll make some very simple circuits so you can kind of get some hands on experience. First thing you want to do is get out your maker pen, go to the palette, hit circuits, and then we have all of our circuits here. Go to view more. These are all the circuits that we have. There's hundreds, they all do different things. You can see that there are a lot of chips, way too many for us to actually search individually for them. If you ever wanna look for a specific chip, you're gonna go up here to the search bar and start typing in what it is that you need. So the first thing that we're gonna to get today is an add chip. So you're gonna select the add chip Go to tools, make sure that you're on create. For circuits, the main tools that we're gonna use are create, connect, configure. So with create selected, you wanna just make a chip. Now every chip has got these little nubs on the left side or the right side of the chip. These are called ports. Ports on the left side of the chip are inputs, meaning that's where information goes in. Ports on the right side of the chip are outputs, meaning information going out. But in order to actually use this chip, we need some numbers to add. So go back into your maker pen and we're going to look for an integer variable or an int variable. Go ahead and click on it and spawn it in just to the left of our add chip. Now looking at the integer variable, you can see all of the inputs and outputs are different than the add chip. By the end of the video, you'll know what all of these mean. But for now, all I need you to do is open your maker pen and go to connect. When you have connect, you'll see this long kind of laser pointer. You're gonna use that to point at stuff. And what I want you to do is take this and point at the green output of the integer variable. And when you do that, you should see a green circle pop up and a number. Then once you see the green circle, I want you to click and hold either with your controller or with the mouse. Then I want you to drag over to the top input of the add chip until you see that little green circle again. Then let go and a wire should be created. So the first thing you'll notice is that all of these ports that were gray now turn green. When it comes to circuits, green ports are integer ports, meaning they only deal with numbers and whole numbers, not decimals. Now we're gonna use the little laser to check what's going on in each of these ports. So using this, I just want you to hover over the inputs of the add chip. Whenever you're hovering over something, you'll notice that a white text shows up and that'll tell you what type of port you're dealing with and then yellow text will pop up and that's showing you the actual value that your port currently is inputting or outputting. So we can see that this input is an integer input and it's currently inputting zero. Then if we hover over this lower one, you can see the same information. It's an integer port and it's putting in a zero. We can also see that it's zero from this little square. And then if we hover over the output, you can see it's also an integer and it's outputting zero, which makes sense because we have zero plus zero equals zero. Now we're gonna change this by changing this little square thingy. So I want you to hover over this lower input and click on it and then open up your maker pen. It'll bring you to this menu where you can either hit plus or minus to change it or you can type in a number, but I'm just gonna hit plus. So we've changed it to one. And now if I exit out, you can see it's changed to one. So if we hover over the output now, it says one, which makes sense. We have zero plus one equals one. And now we're gonna change this other input, the integer variable. If we follow the wire back, all the way to this little square. We're gonna do just like last time and change that to a one. So click on it, open this up, add one, and now that's changed to a one. But if we hover over the output here, you can see it's still zero. It's not changed to one, which means that if that's still zero, if we go over here, it's zero. It's still zero plus one, which equals one. So in Rec Room, variables hold important information. They hold player names, numbers, keep track of game scores, everything. And because variables are in charge of all that important information, every time you want to change a variable, not only do you need the right number going into the input, we also need to confirm the change by using these orange ports called execution ports. So almost any time that you want something to happen in Rec Room or you want something to change, you're gonna use an execution port. 
So for this variable, we need to confirm the change that we made from a zero to a one by sending an execution signal through this orange port. There's many ways that we can do this, but today we're gonna keep it simple. Open the make pin, go back to your palette and type in button. Make sure that you get button and not the legacy button. So just like before, we wanna make a connection. So we're gonna hit connect on our maker pin. I'm gonna go up to the pressed orange execution and connect that to the orange input execution of the integer variable. Now just hit the button and you should see it start glowing. And now if we hover over the integer output, it's a one. And then if we go back to our add chip, because this is one and this is one, now this is two. Now let's say that we wanna keep track of the number of times we've hit this button. What we're gonna do is take our output and hook it back into our input. And now every time we hit the button, it's gonna take the number output here, add one to it, and save that new number as our integer variable. The next time it'll output that new number, add one to it, save the new number, and so on and so forth. So watch, right now it's one, hit it again, now it's two, now it's three, now it's four, and on and on and on and on. All right, so now that we've dipped your toes in and we got you doing the absolute basics, I'm gonna throw a lot of information at you, but don't worry, it'll make sense by the end of the video. But first, we need to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Kiwi Design. They just sent me this awesome VR headset stand compatible with my Quest One, and we're gonna open it and set it up today. This would be great for me because my desk is an absolute mess, and I've dropped my Quest more than one time off of my desk. So this will be good for me to keep it safe and keep it out of the way when I'm actually not using it. And it's Kiwi Design's fifth anniversary, so they've got a special promotion going on. You can get $20 off any any order of $100 or more by using the discount code KW5TH. That's KW5TH. Use my special link below in the video description so that they know I sent you. And check this thing out, man. It looks really clean. It's gonna keep everything organized. I'm definitely gonna keep this on here. Get this box out of here. And once again, thank you Kiwi Design for sponsoring this video. So we have all these chips and they all have ports and as you can see, there's different types of ports with different colors. So every port can be put into about three categories. First category is just executions, which are the orange ones. They don't send out any information. They kind of work like electricity. You send an execution signal when you want something to happen. It's just a signal that tells the chip to do whatever that chip is supposed to do. Then our second category of port types is gonna be single data. These all carry one piece of information and it's what you're gonna use most of the time. Green ports, as we've already seen, are numbers. They're whole numbers with no decimals. Blue ports are floats, which are numbers, but they can be decimals. So an integer could be five and so could a float, but a float could be 5.6, whereas an integer can't have a decimal in. Then we have red ports, which are bool variables. Bool variables can only be true or false. So for example, let's say you had some sort of circuits that asked, is this number equal to five? If it was equal to five, then it would output true. Then we have purple ports, which are strings. Strings are letters. You can put numbers in there as well, but that's a little confusing for right now. Just think of it as letters. And then we have yellows. Yellow ports are everything else. So anything that's not one of these other data types is gonna most likely be a yellow port. They have yellow ports for players, they have yellow ports for objects, they have yellow ports for locations, all sorts of things. The main thing you have to remember with the yellow ones is when you're connecting stuff up, make sure that it's the same yellow port. For instance, let's say you have a chip that has a player port that's yellow. You can only connect that player port with another player port. Okay, so if you ever see a gray input like this or like these, that means they can end up being multiple different types of ports depending on what you hook up to them. So if I hover over the target here, you'll see it can be a player or it can be a rec room object. If I hover over these inputs, it can be an integer, a float, or a vector. So depending on what you hook up to them will then determine what port it actually turns into. 
you'll understand it more as you get working with it. We'll do some examples later on. And then we have list data. List data is just like single ports, except instead of one piece of information, it has many pieces of information coming out of it. And you can recognize them by these little like brackets. So for instance, we have integer list here. So while integer would be the number five, integer list would be the numbers five and six and seven all in a row in a list. Now I won't go into super detail about list today. If you would like to know more, I can make a full video on it. Just let me know in the comments. So now that you've got this information on the different port types, let's do some easy circuits to get your confidence up. So first we're gonna do like every programming language and we're gonna make Rec Room talk to you, send you a hello world message. Just like last time, I want you to get a button then I want you to open your maker pen again, go to your palette and look up a show notification chip. Go ahead and spawn, spawn that in. And just like last time, we wanna connect the press execution to the show notification execution input. Then what I want you to do is take your little laser and hover over the value here. You see this is purple, which means it's a string, which means it's letters. So if we click on it and we open this, you'll see here you can type in whatever you want it to say. So we will type in hello world. Then whenever you hit the button, a message will pop up that says hello world. You can also do this with a player show subtitle and spawn that in then unhook this you just click on the x to unhook it and hook it up to the player show subtitle then of course change the string to whatever you want it to say and again when you click the button you'll see a subtitle okay so next we're gonna go back to our counter from earlier and we're gonna set it up so that it resets once it hits the number 10. we're also gonna have the number be displayed in a text so you don't actually have to be holding the maker pen to see what your number currently is. We have it set up so that every time we hit the button, it goes up by one. So first let's take care of the resetting. For that, we're gonna need an if chip. We're gonna put that in right over there. And we're also gonna need a greater than or equal to. And we'll spawn that in right here. So let's hook up the execution to our if chip, then hook our green output for the integer variable to A and we're gonna hook up the red bool output over here to the red input on the if chip. And then I'm gonna click on this zero down here on B and change it to a 10. We're gonna have it reset when it hits 10. So let's take a moment to talk about the if chip because this is one of the chips that we're gonna use a lot whenever you do circuits. So if chips work using an if then statement. If something is true, then do this thing, else do this other thing. So if we send an execution signal through here and the bool variable here is true, it's gonna go out of the then output. But if the bool variable is false, it's gonna continue to go through the else output. So if the bool is true, it goes out of the then. If the bool is false, it goes out of the else. So right now it equals nine. If I click it one more time, it's gonna go to 10. And then because it's greater than or equal to 10, because it's 10, this is gonna become true, which means our execution is gonna come out of the then output instead of the else. Here, just, just watch over here. There we go. You see how it switched sides? And we can even look at it after the fact. So it equals 10. Is 10 greater than or equal to 10? It is, which is true. So whenever it's true, execution comes out of the top then. Whenever it's false, execution comes out of the lower else. All right, so right now our number is over 10. That's what we wanted, right? But how do we get it to reset once it does equal 10? Well, for that, we're gonna clone this integer variable. So hit clone this integer variable, move it over here. We're gonna come over to our new integer variable, switch this back to zero by clicking on it and changing it to zero. Then remember, when it does equal 10, we have it coming out of this then output. So we're gonna hook that up there. Every time this integer variable becomes 10 or greater, it's just gonna reset back to zero. And even though these are two different chips, they are the same thing. So if I reset the integer variable to zero over here, this integer variable is also zero because they're the same thing. So if we look at this now, it's 10. If I click it one more time, it will become 11 and this will be true, it's then gonna go up here and change it to zero. So watch, click it, whoop, it becomes zero. Actually, I made a, a, a oopsie. Um, switch this 10 to an 11. 
because we want it to reset once it gets past 10, not at 10. So now we need to display this text so you can see it without needing the Maker Pen. And for that, we're gonna get a text tool. So if you open our palette, we just type in text and we can just spawn it in right here. It'll come with its own chip. Now, what we wanna happen is we want this text to display our number every time that we hit the button. So we're just gonna continue the execution signal to the set text execution at the top here. If the number is less than 10, we just want it to go ahead and set our text. But even if it is over 10, we still want it to display. So we're gonna hook this up as well. You can hook up multiple executions to an execution input. Outputs can only go to one place. Now we have a bit of an issue here in that the only text it will display is a string input. So what we need to do is convert these integers into strings in order to have them display. So for that, we're gonna use a chip called toString. Remember I said that strings are letters and words and stuff like that. They can be numbers. They just have to be converted from a number, I guess you could say data type to a string. We can hook up this input. We can hook it up over there or over there because they both stay updated. They're both the same thing. So we're gonna hook it up to this one just so it's a little bit less circuits over there and then hook that up. And you'll see, I mean, if the integer variable is zero, which it is right now, and you can see the result comes out as the same, it's just got quotes around it. And we can hook that up to our text. Every time we hit the button, it's gonna take our variable, add one to it. If it equals 11, not 10, if it equals 11 or higher, then it will switch back to zero. And then whether it's switch back or it's step the same, it's gonna go up here and show whatever our number is. All right, so next let's get you a little bit of experience with the yellow ports. We're gonna make a very simple teleporter. So I want you to go ahead and get another button. And then I want you to go to shapes and just make some sort of cube somewhere. Once you make your cube, I want you to go to your tools hit configure and then click on the cube. You should have this menu pop up. Now scroll down until you see tags and just give it some sort of tag. We'll just call it cube and hit the plus button. Now you're gonna get like four chips in a row. I'm just gonna say them and then if you just get them and spawn them in, we'll hook them up. So open your palette and you're gonna get a set position chip, a get position chip, and a rec room object get first with tag. Now we wanna hook up our pressed execution to the execution of the set position. Remember, orange does stuff. We want it to set the position of something. We're gonna hook up the player port over here to the target. So whenever we hit the button, we want it to teleport the target or the, the person who hit the button to whatever position we get it. Then we're gonna hook up the rec room object get first with tag hook that object up to the target for the get position because we want to get the position. We want to teleport the player to where the cube is. So we're going to put that object into the target and then we're going to put the position of the cube into the position we want to set our target to. Then just like earlier with the string, click on this and give it the same tag that we gave the cube earlier, which we gave as cube. So make sure that this tag matches the tag on the cube. And the way this works now is that if I take this cube, move it anywhere. Now, if I hit this button, it'll teleport me to the cube. Oh, does your brain hurt? <laughs> well, hopefully that was a good foundation for you to start learning circuits. I have other videos with more complicated stuff, obviously. Make sure to support me here on Rec Room. It really does help out. And uh, RCL Man out.